another fan interview series. I am Joseph S. Samaniego. I am here with Father Bill Hartley. Hi. Hey. Good to be with you, Jess. Yep. So, uh, quick break. Do uh, you want to introduce yourself? And just, I mean, I know who you are, but sure. so everyone else can know who you are. Sure. Uh, I'm Phil Hurley. I am uh, originally from Maryland, grew up in Maryland, and I've lived all over the place since. I'm a Catholic priest, and I'm now a pastor of a church here in Raleigh, North Carolina. All right. Awesome. So what was, uh, I mean, not to give away age or anything, but what was some of your first experiences in the science fiction fantasy world, I know as a we've talked before as fans, but what are some of your mm -hmm. your first mm -hmm. memories? No, I'm I'm fine with giving away age, and this will give it away. And that some of my earliest memories, not only of science fiction, but some some of my earliest memories, period, are of the first two Star Wars movies. Okay. So I'm actually not sure if I remember going to the first Star Wars that came out in the in the 70s, I forget what year that was, 70, I was real little. Um, so I might have more like just, I might not remember it exactly, but I remember thinking about it afterwards. But I definitely remember going to see um, uh, the second Star Wars film that came out, The Empire Strikes Back, and just, you know, coming out of the theater and just like being blown away by it and wanting a lightsaber and wanting <laughs> to be Luke Skywalker and all that, so. Yeah, and that's something <laughs> I think a lot of us can just relate to. Yeah, yeah. But I saw it in the theater. Oh, that when, no, yeah. When they were released, so yes. Yeah. So I mean, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I think that goes back to one of my memories. Actually, is from Return of the Jedi. One of my earliest memories. So it kind of dates me a little bit, but mm -hmm. that was one of my earliest to be able to see that. So what do you think now then, as far as going from that point in the '70s to what we have today? Obviously, not taking special effects into consideration, mm -hmm. unless maybe we should, but. Mm -hmm. How do you, what do you think of today's science fiction and fantasy mm -hmm. genre? Yeah, I, um, you know, there's definitely something, I mean, people have their different opinions. If I just take Star Wars, for example, and like the progression of the films, I mean, obviously there's lots of strong opinions mm -hmm. about, you know, the, the movies from the 90s. Um, but I think, I would put it this way, um, you know, the ones from the 70s, obviously the, the special effects were cutting edge for what they mm -hmm. were at that time. But there was the um, there was the humor, there was the human element, um, there was the I don't know. I really haven't thought about this much, but the way that the first Star Wars movies um, took you to another place, and yet there was enough familiar in terms of where they did their sets, mm -hmm. for example, like they were just in the desert somewhere in Tunisia or wherever it was, right? Yeah. It wasn't all CGI backgrounds, right? So it was like actual settings from the, from Earth set as other planets, and there's something about that combination, I think, of familiar, but set somewhere mm -hmm. else far away, um, and a long time ago, yeah. um, that is really interesting. So, from my opinion, I mean, the move in the 90s with CGI and experimenting with that just in Star Wars, and where so much of it was just computer generated, and it didn't have any, well, it wasn't real, right? There, yeah. there wasn't the actual gritty reality of a set. And then in the subsequent movies now that have come out in the past years, I guess the, the third, third one in that trilogy is coming out soon. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things they went back to was on-site set, real people in a real place on Earth, and we're going to make that you know, into another planet. I don't know. I think that says something about, for me, about science fiction is it's got to have a hook in what's unknown and mm -hmm. what's the future and what's possible and a hook in reality. And it's the connection between those two somehow that's interesting, I think. Oh. Really great points. Kind of makes me think too of the old um, Hercules movies from the '60s, '50s, and '60s, where oh, geez, yeah. yeah, and and some of those old movies that the the effects that they had with the claymation and putting things together. There's a certain love in that, you know, just the hard work that goes into making it. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's different. So, yeah. how do you think that a lot of your life now has been kind of maybe influenced? or maybe how has science fiction and fantasy kind of been a part of your life? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I mean, I'll just, at a very basic level, I'll say that um, I was really into it as a kid, and uh, to some extent always have been, but there was a time in my, as a young adult in my 20s and into the early 30s where I, I kind of drifted away from um, taking the time to read science fiction novels. Obviously the movie every now and then, mm -hmm. but especially reading, you know, mm -hmm. talking about science, science fiction novels. 
Um, and I kind of come back to that in my later 30s and now into my mid 40s. Um, and uh, I don't know, there's something to that. It's, it's, a, uh, it's something I really enjoy. And maybe there was a time as an adult where I thought, well, that's kind of kid stuff. I need to mm-hmm. you know, spend my time doing these other things. But um, as a way to just for my own enjoyment and for pleasure reading, reading science fiction now, um, in some ways it kind of brings me back to a childlike uh, joy, a childlike wonder at things. Um, maybe even, thinking about what I said before, maybe it's, you know, it, between that hook and reality and that hook mm. and what's possible in the future and dreaming about things and, yeah. you know, that maybe I kind of left the dreaming aside a little bit and just kind of focused even in my life more on like, okay, the here and now. But reading science fiction again, I think has opened up that sense in me of wonder mm-hmm. and of maybe exploring what's possible. And honestly, I think um, in the past five years, as you know, I've, I've, been a, I've been a pastor for the first time of a church. And um, I, I think for me, both of those two hooks are important. Like what is happening right now and, and you know, what do we need to kind of keep work, keep mm-hmm. going and, um, and you know, the nitty gritty kind of day to day. And there's a lot of that in my work, but but also to keep open to wonder and mm. dreaming, you know. And as a person who believes in God, like I think that's huge. You know what I mean? Um, I think there's so much more that we don't know, mm. right? And so much mystery out there. And science fiction kind of helps open up my mind and and heart to that. I, I find a lot of connection, and a lot of authors have as well, between um, kind of futuristic scientific. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, questions and science fiction and theology or like the base and philosophy the big questions of who are we and why are we here and what are we made for and mm. our hearts kind of expanding so I think that all goes together for me somehow I'm not sure I totally understand it I don't ever want to totally understand it so. <laughs> How about that? that makes a lot of sense and that brings up a lot of great uh, points so maybe for future future interviews we can talk about because I think there is a, a good, good sized community that feels along those same lines huh. um, because us as humans we should be open to the embracing of what we don't know and maybe learn it or maybe just like I said just dream it I've heard it said before I'm forgetting uh, forgetting uh, who said it so I can't attribute it but an author who said that I think it was maybe more specifically referring to fantasy work mm-hmm. but I think it goes with science fantasy mm-hmm. science fiction as well it said that why, you know why is it that there's this draw in us? Why do we like this genre of thing? What is it? And he said basically that the, the things that fantasy and maybe science fiction evoke in us that pull out of our hearts, like oh that's really cool or wouldn't that be amazing? That there's actually that we're built that we're made as human mm-hmm. beings to have the fulfillment of those kind of things, mm-hmm. like desires for the future and hope and ex- exploration and. You know, you know the, the bigger picture of things like that's all built into mm-hmm. us, and and so um, yeah, like I said, I think for me, science fiction and fantasy pulls that out of me and helps me to ask the bigger questions that I ask as a pastor. Oh, that's really great. I mean, it, and I still want to be Luke Skywalker. Yeah, well, I took Luke as my confirmation name, mainly for Luke who wrote a gospel on Saint Luke, but the fact that <laughs> Luke Skywalker is kind of cool yeah. too, like that was. Yeah. So. Real quick, just to kind of sure. bring it to a conclusion, because I know you are very busy. <laughs> uh, what would you like, just in your personal opinion, what would you like to see happen in in science fiction and fantasy going forward for the future? What was some of the, what would be like a uh, a good direction that you think authors and and maybe the uh, creators uh-huh. can bring forward? Well, I'll, I'll say something that I've discovered. It's not new, but it's kind of, I've newly discovered it. Um, and I guess maybe I would like to kind of see, keep going, is kind of hard science fiction. That's mm-hmm. what I've been reading a lot of. Um, Alistair Reynolds is one of my favorite authors recently who used to work for the ESA, the European Space Station, which mm-hmm. I think is an astrophysicist. So I'm really interested in uh, science fiction that kind of, again, there it is. It's the same thing yeah. I was talking about before. It's a hook in the science that we know, stretching that and then looking into what is possible but kind of with that hook firmly in like, no, this is kind of based on mm-hmm. the best science that we have. I find that fascinating maybe because it hangs on both of those things. Um, and I mean, given the fact that in some ways science has caught up with science fiction, things that yeah. were just posited that we're actually able to start to figure out ways to do that 
we, we never imagined, you know, just in the past, uh, well, 50 years since the moon landing, 100 mm -hmm. years especially. Um, I think that kind of hard science fiction, I'd like to see that progress and see where that goes and see the interplay between um, where current science feeds mm -hmm. science fiction, but also maybe where the, the dreaming and the what if of science fiction starts to impel a whole other generation of scientists to ask questions. That would be awesome. That really would be awesome. <laughs> so I think uh, we, we got a great little conversation piece going here, and I'd like to continue that uh, sometime in the future if you'd be open to more discussions. I love talking about, about it. It's great. So <laughs> thanks, right. Justin. Well, uh, again, I'm Joseph S. Samiego. I'm here with Father Phil Hurley as just two fans talking about science fiction and fantasy. So uh, please like and subscribe, and you'll get more of this. Thank you.